Greetings, frying pin wielding horses to <laughs> Geek Salad. Um, our retro review of the 2011 Disney classic, Tangled. Uh, I, I am not came out that long ago. Yeah, I know. I am not Andy. I am Mike. Uh, Andy's where I wish I was right now. He's down Disney World. Uh, and but I couldn't do this alone, so of course I invited from the Wendell Place podcast, Julie. Hello. Hello. Yes. If I'm going to review any Disney movie and I don't have my girlfriend with me, I'm going to be asking Julie to help. Yay. <laughs> so, Tangled. When was the first time you saw Tangled, Julie? Believe it or not, the first time I saw Tangled was on the small TV by the service desk. in, or the, Sorry, the tech desk, I guess, at Verizon and Lemonster when we were working there. Wow. Yep. That's not a big TV either. Nope. But I only, it was funny because it, it was playing on a few separate occasions. So I think I saw the middle and then the beginning and then the end in three separate sections. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I first saw it tangled all the way through uh, maybe one or two years ago. Oh my goodness, it took you that long to see it? Yeah, I mean, I'd heard good things. I just had never gotten around to it. And then finally, um, I don't know what sparked it. Someone, uh, I think Jonna was like talking to talking to, about, uh, to me about it one time when I was out there. And I saw it in, uh, in like Target out there. I was like, well, I'm not paying 25 bucks for it. So I came <laughs> back here and I had just like rented it on like a digital streaming service for like four bucks. And I watched it I'm like, Wow, this is actually pretty damn good. Well, surprisingly, on my last trip out to see Jana, I discovered that Zachary Levi plays Flynn Rider, and I didn't realize that, and I don't know how I didn't put two and two together. <laughs> so actually, one night before bed, I bought the whole... <laughs> bought it, not rented it, on Amazon Prime. So now I own a copy of it and watch it every chance I get, even if it's just on my TV tiny <laughs> little yeah. screen. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I know it was Zachary Levi, but we're still cool because uh, last D23, John and I went and saw the Alan Menken concert. Um, and guess who came out and introduced uh, Alan Menken? No. Zachary Levi. Oh, I'm so jealous. Oh, I love him so much. Oh, yeah. Is, is it, there's actually a really cool um, uh, YouTube video of like one of those like, kind of off-Broadway little tiny shows. Yep. Where they, they where they do a bunch of like the Disney princess songs. Yeah. And Zachary Levi came out and sang uh this song with one of the one of one of the performers. Oh, of course well, he did. He said well he sang uh, I see the light, of course. Yeah. I'm just hoping that someday I walk into a bar and he's there and I can be cool and calm and he'll just discover how awesome I am and want to date me and marry me. You know you won't be cool and calm. I will not, but I will try really hard. I'll be like, oh, hey, what's going on? You know, having a conversation with him, pretending like I don't know who he is, you know. You will be completely fangirling and you know it. Yep. Totally. <laughs> totally. All right. So now that we've gotten out of the way how we how we first saw this movie, let's talk about what did we really like about this movie. Go ahead and start. Well, I'd say I really liked that Zachary Levi was <laughs> Flynn Rider, but that wasn't until recently. Um, oh, gosh. Everything? Everything about this? I love Mandy Moore, so the fact that she got to be a Disney princess was really awesome to me. She has an amazing voice. She does. She's just a brilliant actress and apparently an amazing voice actress, and so that was really fun to see, and my favorite color is purple, so there's so you know, another... <laughs> Another thing I love about it. Yeah, that that uh, that dress is that's actually a really really nice princess dress. It is because it's on the simpler side, but still elegant and really mm. easy to replicate if you wanted to. Unless you're colorblind, and then you ask for like, "Hey, is this purple or is this purple?" And then you give up and find something navy blue and yellow and be yes. Snow White instead. <laughs> Hey, those poofy, those poofy arm things. She was rocking those. She was. I feel like you got more movement to swing that frying pan. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, 
I mean, right, going from the villain, I mean, Mother Gothel. Oh, she's brilliant. Um, who, who, who did her voice? The Broadway, a uh, big Broadway singer. I was trying to remember. I was thinking about it before we we hopped on, and I could not remember for the life of me. All right, I'm going to just do a quick grab here, and voiced by Donna Murphy. Yeah, she yeah she is huge in uh, on Broadway and. Oh, well, yes, yes, yes. I I couldn't picture who she was, but yeah, she's super huge. Uh, apparently, she's uh. She's done Hello, Hello Dolly more, most recently. She won a Tony for her role in The King and I. Oh, yeah. As Anna. Yes. Good for her. She deserved it. And her, oh, uh, her I, I, honestly, Mother Knows Best is probably my favorite Disney villain song. I was really thinking about that earlier, too, because this whole soundtrack is really incredible. It is. It's, you know, from See the Light to Mother Gothel's Mother's Knows Best. It's just really great. And then the, the song that they, uh, I Had a Dream. Oh. That so is... fun and so awesome. It's just like such a feel-good movie. I mean, the whole, the whole um, Snuggly Duckling scene is just pure brilliance. Yes. I mean, the little, like the, the big, huge bru bruiser you know, Viking with little tiny crystal unicorns. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then at the end when he sees them in like the, the archway and he's like, wait a minute. Oh, that was brilliant. <laughs> nice little escape thing there. Um, I mean, I, I was supposed the only villains I wasn't really a big fan of were the, uh, what was it? The Slasher Brothers? The... Yeah. I, I mean, they, they served their function, but eh. And you know, they weren't really in it that much anyway, so it wasn't yeah. like they had a huge role. So they kind of, you know, were his little sidekicks. I liked Eugene's interaction with them because he was such a little smart cookie yeah. with them and very sarcastic. And so I liked that interaction with them. And I think it worked better that they were so dry and didn't really have much of a, a personality that it just worked out better because his lines just seemed to come across so much better. Mm. I, I'm honestly, if I had to choose as a name between Eugene and Flynn Rider, I'm choosing Flynn Rider every single day. Really? Because I'm all about Eugene Fitzherbert. Really? Oh, absolutely. It, I suppose it sounds more. I feel like it suits him better. It 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 seems more elegant and noble, but he just seems more like a Flynn Rider because that's just an action like swashbuckling type name. And. And I feel like at the beginning of the movie, he totally was a Flynn Rider. But as you get to know him and know his personality and realize that he's just a big softy. You have a point. And he so, fits the Eugene Fitzherbert. So pretty much when he reveals his name is Eugene Fitzherbert. That's pretty much the time when he becomes Eugene Fitzherbert. Exactly. Okay. So we're both right. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and... Honestly, I mean, even like, I would say the song I like the least, but even I still love it is um, uh, the When Will My Life Begin. Yeah, I feel like it was a good way to kind of start the movie. Yeah. But, but... if I'm, if I'm going to listen to any songs over and over, yeah. it's, I mean, I'll listen to that song, but I'll be listening to that song and waiting for Mother Knows Best, um, <laughs> I Have a Dream it. and I See the Light. Yeah. Um, I do like to listen to that song while I'm cleaning. Yeah. I feel like it motivates me to clean because it's, you know, an upbeat song and she's cleaning the oh yeah the tower while she's singing it. So that's pretty much the only time I really like to listen to it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I still enjoy it. I still enjoy it enough to put it on my Ultimate Disney playlist, which I just made up last week. Yes. Thank you for finding the Booty You soundtrack for me. I realize now why they haven't made a CD of it because listening to 14 minutes of that without the parade, yeah, gets a little tiresome. <laughs> yeah, I, I realized that when I when I put on the soundtrack to uh, the Paint the Night sound, uh, parade. Yep, it's uh, 20 minutes long. Um, I still like it, but it loses something without the parade in front of you. Yeah. I still listen to it though. I don't care. <laughs> oh, I know. Bo Booty still plays, you know, my car all the time now. But yeah. <laughs>
Um, I mean, the the whole uh, the whole like kind of uh, story arc of um, Kang of Rapunzel, you know, from start, you know, to where she sees the lights in the in her, on her birthday, all the way to the end. I thought that was a beautifully done story. Um, Absolutely, because she's this very naive character, and the way, the way she grows and kind of learns about the world and realizes that yeah, it has its ups and downs and turmoils, but isn't actually this crazy awful place that her mother mother <laughs> made it out to be. And then she actually stands up to her. It's just brilliant. And I was like, yeah, Rapunzel. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and I mean, the story arc for, for um, Flynn slash Eugene as well. Um, I mean, a lot of the times when they, when they do these, you know, the, the typical, you know, princess romance, it seems kind of rushed and this one it seemed kind of rushed a little bit but it was i mean i like the characters so much that i kind of forgave it some of that rush feeling and there wasn't you know that kiss it wasn't really anything like that where you know normal princess movies are it was still like that growing buddy romance and at the end and he's like and after you know asking and asking and asking she finally said Yes, yeah, or you know, I finally said yeah. I'd marry her or whatever. No, no, no. no. He uh, said, uh, and she finally said yes, and then Eugene. Yes. All Eugene. right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that was really great, and I really loved when she says, "I trust you," and he goes, "You shouldn't." Mm. Like that, like pure honesty right there was like, yes. Yeah. This is yeah. great. The, the very fact that he says you shouldn't trust me is kind of implying that, yeah, you actually can't trust him. Yeah, because he realizes he's not necessarily the most trustworthy and he's being honest about that. So Right. Very Nick Wilde of him. <laughs> do you cry every time you see this movie? Because I do. Um, I'm not going to lie. That I, I do get kind of choked up when he cuts her hair at the end. Yep. Oh my gosh. I was just thinking about that. And then when they finally see her. Although, not gonna lie. So they see her and it's great and they hug her and everything. But I just found it so weird at the end that they all kind of like sit down in this really awkward hug. Mm. I mean, the only the only kind of kind of nitpick I have with that, I, I guess this kind of goes into our like negatives of it, is that you never, you haven't seen your daughter in like, so what, 17 years, 17, 17 and a half years? And she was blonde the last time you saw her. Now this 18-year-old brunette shows up and you automatically recognize her as your daughter. Okay, so I understand your gripe because a lot of people have said that. But when you look at the side-by-side -side of her mother and her, they're almost identical. And, you know, she has those green eyes and... As a woman, I don't have any children yet, but you know your child. And it wasn't like this child was ripped from her the day after she was born. She, you know, had a few months with her to you know, get to know her. And yeah, you know, and her. I, and I was, I had bleach blonde hair when I was a baby and now this is my natural hair color. So yeah. And I did like the fact that it wasn't just an immediate rush and embrace. It was like, there was like a few moments where she was like, she it was like just studying the face exactly. Uh, so yeah, I'm so I'm willing to forgive that that minor nitpick because the rest of the movie is just so damn good. <laughs> <laughs> and um, well, I mean, while while we're on this, uh, I mean, the uh, Tangled Ever After short, oh, is so brilliant. Pascal is literally my favorite Disney sidekick <laughs> ever in life. I think I have like three Pascal stuffed animals. I don't know if I have one here. I do have my Dante, though. I finally got him. Oh, cute. He's so amazing. But yeah, Pascal's actually on my bed, so I don't have him right here. But I have the one. I got one my first trip to, not my first trip to Disney, but I don't know if it was my trip to Disney with you or my trip to Disney with Amy. And then this last trip that I went on with Amy when we did the Bon Voyage breakfast, which is amazing if you get a chance to do it because Flynn Rider is sassy and wonderful. <laughs> um, 
but I got one that has the little like snap bracelet arm, so he like wraps around and like hugs you. He's so cute. <laughs> he just so looks you... so angry though. Oh, I also got this. Hold on, let me show you. Okay. This is what's known as dead air. Ooh. I don't know. If <laughs> That is adorable. But he has a little bit of paint yeah. that got on him, and so that part of his head turned purple. It's just like the greatest painting ever. That is a very nice painting. I I, I appreciate that one. Yeah, I got that during the Festival of the Arts. I also got, I don't know if you could see her up on the wall, Princess Leia. Oh, yeah. That's a lovely Princess Leia. Oh, it was amazing. It just spoke to me, and I was like, yes, I need to own this. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. I'd probably want to my... buy it myself. And then my nightmare before Christmas stocking that's still hanging on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is before Christmas. It is. Um, and I mean, we can we can we should also probably mention Maximus. Yeah, I love when she first meets him, and she's like, "Sit, yeah. sit. <gasps> Who's your good boy? <laughs> you just need some love." Is this bad man mean to you? And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then Maximus is like, <clears throat> <laughs> oh, that's such a great scene. I do like the begrudging respect that um, Eugene and Maximus kind of grow for each other. <laughs> I know, at the Apple scene. What? I paid for them. Most of them. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, of course, you know, John uh, named one of our cats after Maximus. Myself. Yes. The very friendly one, which is unlike Maximus the horse. Well, okay, so Maximus the horse is friendly towards everyone except Flynn. He's also very strict, though. Yes. Yes. Except when it comes to apples. Yes. Well, he's a horse. He loves apples. Um, and, I mean, uh, you know what? I gotta respect uh, Zachary Levi and Mandy Moore. They both came back for the Tangled, Tangled series. Yes, which I've I've only seen like the first like first one or two episodes of. But I watched I, one episode the other night, and I'm not sure which one it was, and I don't remember what happened in it. But oh, it was just so good. And again, I started watching it because I was like, "Ooh, Zachary Levi!" Although, not gonna lie, before realizing that he was Flynn Rider. I was able to separate the two, and now all I hear is Zachary Levi, and I like picture him <laughs> saying everything as Flynn Rider. So I'm like, eh, it didn't ruin it for me because it's still amazing. But because I remember him from Chuck, and oh, yeah. then he was on the marvelous Miss Maisel, and then in Shazam. If you haven't seen Shazam, you must because it's so good. I've oh, seen yeah. it. Yes, uh, I went and saw Shazam opening day. And then I actually, actually, I saw it two weeks before opening day. Oh yeah, I remember that. And then I actually, uh, that was my birthday present to Andy. I brought him in to see Shazam, and he loved it too. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that was okay. And this is gonna make me sound awful, but I think that was the first DC movie of this latest saga that I actually truly, truly enjoyed. Uh, you're not alone in that. I mean, I I enjoyed One Woman. Wonder Woman. Um, Wonder Woman was really good. Yeah, and, I'm sorry about that. But like yeah, Justice League, meh. Batman yeah. versus Superman, awful. Yeah. Aquaman. I, Aquaman took me out because the Boston Aquarium is not the New England Aquarium. In the movie at the beginning. Oh yeah. yeah. I was like, well, that's not my aquarium. Screw this movie. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember seeing that in the New England Aquarium. Oh, because it's not the New England Aquarium. Yeah. And it was like this massive, like, three-pane glass aquarium. And I was like, no, no, no. No. Yeah. But you know what? I had I had fun with the movie. I, I, I had fun with it. Whatever. I fell asleep. Then you probably didn't have as much fun as I did. No. We're, okay, so what really bothers me is the guy that played the, like, blonde, I guess, bad guy, his brother, whoever it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, is the father in the Insidious movies. Yeah, he is, And yeah. he's in a lot of, like, those scary type movies. So that's just who I picture him as. So it kind of took me out of the movie because I didn't feel like he really took on the role of, 
I don't think he's a very good actor. Let's just I'm throwing it out there. <laughs> well, he he also was not anywhere near the best part of that movie. He no, was no. one of the worst parts of that movie, in my opinion. Okay, okay, so it wasn't just me and my. No, no, I watched that movie for Jason Momoa and for Jason Momoa alone. I thought he did very good. Yeah. But anyway, Tangled. Right, back to Tangled. <laughs> <laughs> this was called the uh, Divergent Moment. <laughs> um. But yeah, uh, you know, Tangled, just so, so much fun all the way around. Uh, did you have anything, anything else that you could think of to talk about? Oh my gosh, everything. Yeah. I, Pascal, I can't, like, talk about him enough. His little teeny tiny personality and his expressions. And my favorite is when he is sitting on her shoulder or on her head and Maximus and Flynn are like arguing back and forth as they're walking into the palace. Mm. He's just like, <laughs> he's like, I'm watching you. And they're like, Oh, oh whoops, okay. All right. <laughs> I think my favorite part of Pascal was when, um, uh, when Rapunzel had Flynn tied up at the beginning with her own hair, which is cool. <laughs> and he's trying to be all charming. And she's in Pascal's just like. <laughs> and when he sticks his tongue in the ear the second time, and he's like, no. And he's like. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the, his uh, classic moment during I See the Light. <laughs> when they're. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he turns uh, beat red, he's hiding his eyes. He's just got beak. <laughs> yes, he has to be. He has to beak. Yeah, that, it was just so brilliantly done. The whole movie, the lanterns, how like the first one is lit by the king and the queen, and then you just see all of them light and trickle down, and how they're in the boat and they're reflecting off the water, and uh, and her her excitement at that mm. scene is just absolute pure innocent joy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just the, so incredibly done and portrayed, and so wonderful to watch. It's the thing she's been dreaming of doing for eighteen years now. Yeah. Just experiencing the the can the the floating lanterns for, what, for the first time in our life, and it's yeah that that moment you really feel all of her joy. Yeah, and, and I think it's it's funny when they uh, are in the cave and they're about to drown, hmm. and you know her hair glows and she doesn't think anything of it. So he's like, "Yep, yeah, my real name is Eugene Fitzherbert," and she's like, "I have hair that glows when I sing." And then she's like, I have hair that glows when I sing. <laughs> <laughs> I love all the like the creative ways they they find to let her use her hair. I mean, like, yeah. like just in her in her um in her kind of room there, she's just doing all kinds of things, like whipping it around, like using it to swing, and she's just she's got mad skills with that hair. Oh, absolutely. And I love when it's a Pascal scene. Oh, when she wraps his hand. Mm. in her hair and she's like don't freak out don't freak out and pascal is like look look at your hand <laughs> and he's like not freaking out not freaking out <laughs> freaking out <laughs> uh, the, yeah the, the chemistry between mandy moore's rapunzel and and zachary levi's flynn is just it is off the chart it is one of my favorite couples in disney movies to be honest Absolutely. And I feel like in a lot of Disney movies, the prince and the princess don't have that much interaction. Mm. Like in Aladdin, they do. But Cinderella, not so much. It's basically the movie is, you know, evil stepsisters dance with the prince. Prince comes to try a shoe on her foot, married. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I guess what? Beauty and the Beast, too. Yeah. So basically, all my favorite movies. So Beauty and the Beast, Tango. Aladdin. Aladdin, there's a lot of interaction between them, so you actually feel them getting to know each other, rather hmm. than just yep, I danced with her, she was pretty, the shoe fits, excellent. No offense, Cinderella, but... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even, even a movie like Princess and the Frog, which I did enjoy, yeah. I, I actually I saw that one for the very first time in November. Okay. I was out, and uh, I was out seeing John, and she showed it to me, and I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought it would, but my biggest quib quibble was, I I just didn't buy the relationship between Tiana and Nazim. 
I, I thought it, it it was a little bit too sudden. I, I got the shift of, yeah, of Nadine. I feel like she didn't super like him at all for most of the movie. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, okay, you're great. Yeah, um, exactly. Like, and like with Flynn and Rapunzel, he was kind of a jerk in the beginning, but he never really was to her. Yeah, he... He did have a gradual shift, uh, enough of a shift, and she actually had enough of a shift towards him as well that it actually made it a little bit more believable for me. Yeah, I agree. Uh, great. I so, did like, uh, sorry, I did like the, the princess and the frog, though, that she was the one that saved him. Yeah, and no, I agree. Around, I thought that was a nice twist for that. And, uh, and quite frankly, uh, the... Mother Gothel de demise was a lot less terrifying than the uh, F Dr. Facilier demise. That one was just terrifying beyond belief. Um, I actually really, really hate the way she dies. The it, oh. Well, pa I, actually, Pascal did that, too. Yeah, I just feel like it was pretty aggressive for a Disney movie, it seemed like. Uh, um... And like you don't see her body; it's just kind of a uh, her cloak on the yeah. ground. Yeah, and it's then still... the cloud of dust. Yeah, yeah, but it's still a little like, uh, all right then. Well, it's falling from a high place. That's a pretty standard Disney. No, villain. I guess yeah, that's how. <laughs> that's how um, Gaston. Gaston died. Uh, the um, what's his name from Tarzan? Oh yeah, he died from falling. Um. Oh man. Uh, but do you really see the the falling in those? Because this one, you're like looking straight down, and it's like <laughs> death. Gaston, you don't see. You just see him fall off the castle into like clouds. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh um. Uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh yep. That was uh, that yep. was definitely a fall in death. Yeah. Okay. Eh, all right. Fair. But no, I, I get what I get what you mean. Uh, you you never actually see the the impact exactly, and like you heard this impact. Yeah, although it was just dust. So that's what that's what a few hundred years of uh, cheating death will do to you. Apparently, indeed, so kids don't cheat death for a couple hundred years. Don't do it. Nope, not it. Not worth it. You're an enslave a young, pretty blonde girl. That's not good. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> so yeah um all in all tangled two thumbs up <laughs> all the thumbs up yay all right so uh yeah um so next week uh, i believe andy will be back uh because he's coming back to you tomorrow or friday oh that's so sad that their trip is over though they look like yeah. they had so much fun i know and plus they still they stayed at the polynesian yeah that's just winning all around. Yeah, I, I I barely get enough just taking the monorail through the Polynesian. Oh, I was so jealous when um, Autumn posted that she watched the fireworks from the pool. Oh, yeah. Man. I mean, yeah, I mean, Polynesian is right there. I mean, the only way you can be closer is if you stay at the Contemporary oh, the or the Grand Floridian. Floridian. Yep. But I feel like the Polynesian is just at the exact angle yeah. to Magic Kingdom that it's just perfect. Yeah. I did see, when I stayed at the All-Star Sports, we did see fireworks from the Galaxy's something or other show that Hollywood Studios had. Mm. I would say the best the best viewing of the fireworks I ever saw was um, when we were, uh, we were down with my sister um, yeah, and, and oh, it was uh, the, uh, the pirates cruise thing, or what the dessert cruise, or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't the pirates cruise. It was just like a kind of a chartered boat. But I mean, he, he the the pilot had the had all the music pumped into the speakers, and you could see it right there. That was, was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I was seeing Hanson and then meeting Hanson that night. Yeah. <laughs> um, I actually saw the boo to you fireworks show whatever that one's called the hollow wishes hollow yeah. wishes that's what it's called from the top of the contemporary oh we did brunch that day and we didn't realize that it was hollow wishes that night because it was a 
Halloween party and we had done the Halloween party earlier in the week mm. and we went out to meet the headless horseman during the fireworks show so we could still hear all the music which was phenomenal mm. but it was when there was absolutely no line to meet the headless horseman and we were like headless horseman or fireworks and then at the end of the week we just magically got to see the fireworks show from the top of the contemporary we also saw the christmas ones Ooh. from the top of the contemporary and now is that the california love... grill yes oh nice i love the music for the hollow wishes and the fireworks were great you know time mm -hmm. but the one one thing that I did absolutely love about the Christmas party, because there wasn't much that I did, but watching those fireworks, that was probably the most incredible fireworks show I've ever seen. The music going off to the Nutcracker, mm -hmm. and then that finale. Oi. Amazing. The best fireworks display I've ever seen was probably during the uh, Disneyland... Uh, actually, no, the 50th anniversary. The... Uh, remember dreams come true fireworks display that nice. one was amazing really first time i ever seen like lasers they it was the first time they ever used laser um laser lights during the fireworks the cool thing about disneyland is you basically are driving through because it's you know so small they have to fit it in you know downtown anaheim so mm -hmm. when jonna picked me up and we went to the disneyland hotel because we were doing um the tangaroa i can't think of what it's called cafe tangaroa i want to say tavern but that's not what it was called and the um trader sam's as we were driving in, the fireworks were going off. So that was really cool to almost kind of be immersed in it when you're outside the park, too. Yeah, yeah. I do I do enjoy Disneyland a lot. And they they both have their own different kinds of magic. I love yes. Disneyland because it still feels original, and you still get that old-school feel, and you get the classic feel walking through it. Yeah. And I really, really think that's awesome. Hmm. I agree. And Disney World is still cool because it's so much more. There's plenty to do. I mean, a four day uh, four day pass is scarcely enough to cover everything. Barely. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, tangled. <laughs> <laughs> oh right, that. Another tangent. Anyway, at least they were both okay. At least this one was Disney related. The other one just went over to DC. Yeah. But it was. It started being relative to Tangled because Zachary Levi, I mean, yeah. so we're in the right place. <laughs> Zachary Levi, he, he's so great. He can bridge both gaps, Disney and DC. We just yes. need him in the Marvel Universe. He is in the Marvel Universe. He is. He was in Thor The Dark World and uh, Thor Ragnarok. He was one of the uh, Warriors 3. What? How do I not remember this? Uh, Faldoral. Um, he, well, they he they played a very small role in both Dark World and uh, um, uh, Ragnarok. Ragnarok. He was barely in it, but you know, um, Faldoral was played in a different by uh, by Josh Dallas actually um, from uh, Once Upon a Time. The, yeah, the in the first show. one, right? Huh? Yeah, and then the first one, Faldoral was played by Josh Dallas. And then his character, then he had to be recast. He couldn't sh uh, do uh, Dark World, so they recast him as Zachary Levi. I guess I'm gonna be watching some Thor tonight. <laughs> um, also, just you know, not crazy or anything, but he's also my. I take it someone's got a crush. Jeez, I, I promise, <laughs> if I ever meet him, I will be so cool, and I'll be like. Tangled? I've never seen that. Shazam? What's DC? <laughs> Miss Maisel? I've never even heard of you. Zachary Levi? Oh, it's nice to meet you. What do you do for a living? <laughs> and on that gigantic lie, we're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna say goodnight. Uh, so, um, I, Andy usually does the whole where you can find us, so I'm not I'm out of practice. Uh, you can find us here on YouTube, obviously, so click subscribe down there and hopefully hit the like button. And comment, but please be civil. Um, you can find us on Stitcher, on Slacker, I believe. I don't know about the last one. Uh, or you can find us on at geeksout.podbean.com. Uh, You're on Spotify now, too, aren't you? Huh? 
Oh, yes, yes, we are. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. I helped you guys out with that one, so that's how I know. Uh, again, Andy does that much a lot better than I do. <laughs> uh, Julie, where can we find One Little Spice? Dear Lord, everywhere. So we... Our YouTube channel, The Taste Lab, has all of our episodes, but also has a couple vlogs of us making some Disney food recipes, so we help you bring Disney magic into your own kitchen, so search The Taste Lab on YouTube and subscribe there. We are on Podbean, so it's onelittlespice.podbean.com. We're on iTunes, we're on Google Play or Google Music or whatever the Google one is uh we're on stitcher we're on tune in so if you say hey alexa play one little spice podcast she plays the latest episode which is pretty nice. cool it's probably playing in my kitchen right now because she probably heard me <laughs> um we're on spotify as well and we have a website that is sort of up. You can go to one little spice podcast.com and actually enter in your email to subscribe to find out when we actually go live. I am working really hard to get that up and running. We're going to have recipes, reviews, pictures, links to all of our social media. Um, on Instagram, we're at one underscore little underscore spice. Right now we have a giveaway going on for our one year episode so if you guys want to check us out there the instructions are there and it's running through the 18th of may so it's you've got some time to enter still um and then we're on twitter we're at one little spice we have a facebook page we have a facebook group that you can join to talk about all the awesome food in disney oh i guess that's what we do i'm the one little spice podcast me and my best friend talk about disney food so each week we take a different restaurant we tell you about the atmosphere, what we've had there, how we feel about it, all the great food, and we give you some awesome Disney t tips for traveling, so definitely check us out. And you're on Patreon. Oh, and we're on Patreon! Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Oh my god, and Public. Okay, so on Public is where you can get our awesome... Hold on, let me... Uh, our awesome merchandise. So we have One Little Spice t-shirts, we have sweatshirts, we have mugs, cell phone cases, Literally anything that you could think of with One Little Spice's logo on it. Uh, we have a sale coming up March. Nope, we're in May. May 15th through 19th. All of our merch is going to be on sale if you want to buy some then. And we are on Patreon. So on Patreon is where you get all the other awesome exclusives. So we have Magical Snack Corner, which is... Um, an extra episode that we have that comes out every once in a while. We have the food and wine festival extras and we kind of dive deeper into some of the snacks that you can find around the park uh what else do we have there we have like a button pack a spice pack you can join us on one of our episodes and it's www.patreon.com slash one little spice so head over there and support us and every recipe starts with one little spice yay so i'm <laughs> So until next time, she's Julie, I'm Mike. Go forth and be nerfful. Talk to you later. <laughs>